Dear students, today we will learn about preparation of stocks and working solutions. It seems to be basic but actually an important task while working in the laboratory. A solution is a mixture of one or more solutes in a solvent. Before going to preparation, I would like you to introduce about certain precautions and procedures. For example, while measuring the liquid reagents, we should use some narrow neck apparatus like measuring cylinders and they should be properly labeled with a tag which is mentioning the name of reagent, date of preparation of that solution, the initial of the person who prepared these solutions, lot number and expiry number. Dear students, solution preparation is very important task while working in the laboratory. Uh, now we are going to have some introduction about solutions and their types. So there are two components, solute and solvent. Solvent is the medium in which solute is usually dissolved. Briefly, uh, so the solutions can be of different types depending on the concentration of the solute they have. So based on the concentration of the solute of different components of the of solutions, we have various types, for example, molar solution, which is represented by capital M, molar solution, which is denoted by small m, percentage solution, and parts solution. They can be parts per million, parts per billions, but we will only talk about parts per million, which is denoted by PPM. Further, percentage solutions can be divided into weight by volume, weight by weight, volume by volume, and weight by volume. How to calculate the concentration of different solute in this solution? This varies. First of all, what is molar solution? Which is denoted by capital M. It is number of moles of solute in one unit liter of solvent. So number of moles of solute in one unit liter of solvent. There is a formula for that. Mass of solute in grams can be calculated using formula weight of solute multiplied by the molarity we required multiplied by volume we need to prepare for that solution. The final volume we need to prepare for that solution. For example, if I say that I need to prepare one molar solution of Tris
buffer and it is 0.5 liters so I'm going to put the values in the formula so how much stress base we are going to measure to dissolve in a solvent that will comes by using this formula formula weight of stress base is 121.1 multiply by molarity we need one molar of the solution so we will put one then we have to add the volume in that formula and the volume we have is 0.5 liters or you can say 500 ml by putting in the formula we will get the answers in grams which is about 60 grams so we will weigh about 60 grams and dissolve this 60 grams in final volume of 0.5 liters we will get our solution it is noted by small m and in this we need to have number of moles in per kilogram of the solvents that means kappa solvent uh, is measured in kilograms but usually we will use molar solution and uh, the rest of the solution we are going to prepare for this experiment is that they are molar so I have given you the detail of molar solutions next is the percentage solution percentage solution as we already talked about they can be weight by weight that means the, that the solvent as well as uh, solute both are in we will measure them in weight or mass they can be volume by volume both will be weighed in liquid volume but the most common we'll use is weight by volume that the solute is in powder form in solid form and the solvent is in liquid form so for calculation of percentage solution of weight by volume we can take just the example of 10% STS STS is basically sodium dodecyl sulfate is what one of the solution that we use commonly in the lab and we will also prepare it so to prepare 10% weight by volume STS solution that means we have to take 10 gram of SCS powder and make the final volume up to 100 ml but by dissolving 10 gram of SCS in a final volume of 100 ml we can get 10% weight per volume SCS solution This is about the brief introduction of the types of the solutions that we commonly use in the lab. Now there is another terminology that would I like to introduce you about. It is about stock solution and working solution. The solution we have in laboratory, they are of, you can say, two categories, stock and working as the name show stock is something that has high concentration and it's useful for storage and further use and working is something that has the measurement of our required experiment according to required measurements according to experiment most commonly used papers for in cell or molecular biology laboratory are stocks are 
वन मोलर ट्रिस बफर पॉइंट फाइव मोलर ईडीटी बफर फाइव मोलर एन एस सी एल बफर इन एडिशन टू दिस ऑफन वी ऑल्सो मेक अ कंसेंट्रेटिव सोल्यूशन टू सेव स्टोरेज स्पेस एज वेल एज टू स्पेयर टू प्रिजर्व द टाइम हाउ यू कैन प्रिपेयर अ वर्किंग सोल्यूशन फ्रॉम स्टॉक सोल्यूशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला दैट यू शुड बी क्विंट विद एंड दिस इज सी वन वी वन इज इक्वल टू C2 V2 C1 and V1 represents concentration of salt solution while V1 represent volume of stock solution Two represents working. So C two stands for concentration of working solution, and V two stands for volume of working solution. the most common example of stock and working solution that are used in molecular biology laboratory is 50x uh, electrophoresis buffer 50x mean 50 times concentrated and the buffer is name is tae this buffer is used for electrophoresis we have this uh, buffer in our laboratory in a stock and but while working in the lab while running the gel buffer we need it 1x tee how we are going to convert your calculate for the calculation of 1x tee so we are going to use the formula c1 v1 is equal to c2 v2 For example, if I provide you a situation that we need to prepare one liter of one x T A buffer, like I will give you a flask or a beaker, and I will say you. that uh, dear student go and prepare one x ta buffer and i will provide you an empty buffer empty flask and another flask which is having the stock of stock solution of 50x ta how you are going to prepare one x ta buffer from that for this we have to use the formula we know the concentration of stock buffer is 50x so instead of c1 we are going to put 50 x here multiply by volume how much volume we will be needing to be drawn from 50x and to add in 1x it is a question mark this is the volume which we need to know which we need to calculate concentration of our working which we need to make is 1x so we will put 1x here why volume of working solution is 1 liter so we will put 1 liter here by slide adjustment the question mark which is actually the volume of 
stock needed to be added to make 1 XTAE can be calculated by multiplying 1x with 1 liter and dividing with 50x. This 50x comes uh, below the to the equation. So we will get the volume. And the desired volume that will come here is were about the brief introduction that how there are different types of uh, solutions and how we can make working solution from the stock solution. Now we will go towards the preparation of the solutions. Dear students, most commonly for preparation of solutions, whether it is stock solution or working solution, we need some instruments like weighing balance, magnetic stirrer, or we can also say hot plate, and pH meter. Let me introduce you about these instruments a little bit. So, so first of all, weighing balance is an uh, instrument which is used to measure mass of an object. There are different types of weighing balance that are available, uh, but usually they are of two types. One is analytical and one is precision weighing balance. They both vary in the quantity they can measure as well as in the, the uh, precision in that we measure. Analytical balance usually has different windows so we can measure from different dimensions like you can um, add things from here or you can use that window. So uh, this analytical balance first of all this is a sign of power button from where we can switch on the balance. For, there are certain instructions for putting this analytical balance in a lab. For example, it should be on a balanced surface as well as it should not be in direct contact with the air. Otherwise, the powder or the uh, mass you are going to measure can be interrupted. So you can see this weighing balance can measure up to 0 0.0000 grams. So it has high precision value. This is analytical balance. So whenever you measure something, you need to tear down or zero the, uh, the weight of your container or weighing paper. So after putting the weighing paper, you need to tear it so that the volume or the mass of the weighing paper is become zero. This is magnetic stirrer, also called as hot plate. Magnetic stirrer, uh, comes in different dimensions and different model. There are some which are also digital. There are some with a function of heating. This magnetic stirrer has two function, stirring and heating. So whenever you need to mix something, you need to add a magnet, a wire splashes, put your container on the plate, this is a plate which has magnetic field which allow this magnet to stir. Switch on stirring. You can adjust the speed as you require. This hot plate also has a function of heat. So you can also adjust the temperature. Different types of stirrers comes with different range of heating but usually they are, they can go up to 70 degrees centigrade from room temperature. pH meter is a very sensitive instrument and usually it is used to measure the pH of the solution. It has certain parts. Uh, this, these can come in different models, different displays, some are digital, some are buttons, but mostly they have three common parts. One is a display or meter. One is arm. You can move this arm so that you can easily go to your solution and third is the most sensitive part which is probe so for each time you use the probe or pH meter it is needed to wash it for washing 
remove the probe from the storage buffer. Usually the probe is stored in a KCL solution. Put the probe in a container in, a, in which you want to wash it. This is the bottle with distilled water and you can wash the probe up to down with distilled water. Now you can use this probe to your required solution. And you need to each time uh, before and after using this probe to wash it with distilled water. For preparation of one molar crisp buffer, pH 8, we need to take distilled water. For 100 ml buffer, initially we'll take some less amount of water like 80 ml water and put it in a glass beaker. This base, we will add 12.1 gram of this base, but before adding the, the powder, we need to balance out or tear the weight of this paper. And now we will add some amount in this. Then put this prescribed amount in the beaker and put the beaker on the stirrer. We will switch on this. And keep stirring until it clears or dissolves all the powder. After the solution of the complete powder, we will check the pH of this solution by using pH meter. Before adding into the solution, we need to wash the probe. The pH of crisp solution should be 8. For using this, we will need to add acid in that. So we will add, we are going to add acid in this until its pH becomes 8. After complete the dissolution of the powder and setting of pH, we will now make the final volume. For this, as we are preparing one molar fresh solution of 100 ml, we will put all the volume back in the cylinder. Then add water to make it 100 ml. Now we need to store the prepared solution in a reagent bottle clean. At its appropriate storage conditions. This is one molar solution pH 8. Now we will prepare 0.5 molar EDTA solution. For preparing of this solution, we are going to prepare this 400 ml buffer. After mining the amount, we are going to add this In this to water. To dissolve it, add a magnet.
EDDA is highly acidic. It would not clear until its pH becomes 8. As you can see, its pH goes in the acidic range. We are going to add NaOH in it, drop by drop. Let it dissolve. Okay, after the buffer solution pH is 8, you can see that its color becomes clear. Now, finally, we are going to make the volume up to 100 ml with the help of a measuring cylinder. Okay, now this is 0.5 molar EDTA solution, 100 ml has been prepared. We can store it in a clean region bottle. Now this stock solution can be prepared, can be used for few months if stored on appropriate conditions. Now preparation of 5 molar sodium chloride solution. 5 molar sodium chloride solution preparation, we need sodium chloride powder and we are going to make 100 ml of this solution. So uh, we are going to add less than 100 ml amount of distilled water in a beaker. I am taking about 70 ml of distilled water. And in that amount of water, we need to add 29.2 grams of NaCl solution powder. So as you know that we need to tear off the weight of paper first. When it shows 000, we will add NaCl powder. Twenty nine point six gram NaCl powder should be added into approximately seventy ml distilled water, which we have measured earlier. Then add magnet in it. This 5 molar NaCl, NaCl uh, solution is basically a super saturated solution. That means okay, we need heat to dissolve it. As you can see that the solution's appearance is turning transparent as heat is going to dissolve the powder. 5 molar NaCl solution has become transparent after dissolving it and heating it. So we are going to make the volume final by adding back into the cylinder. As we are making it 100 ml, so we need final volume up to 100 ml. As you can see, certain volume has already raised because of the powder of NaCl we have added. As you know, for transparent liquids, we use lower meniscus to have accurate volume. Now this 100 ml 5 molar NaCl solution is completed. We can store it in a clean reagent bottle.
and use our, in our further experiments. Now we are going to prepare 10% sodium tordesai sulfate STS solution weight by volume. For preparing this, first we are going to weigh the 10 grams of this STS powder. So before weighing, we need to tear down yeah, zero the weight of paper. And then add STS. STS is slightly irritating to the mucous membrane. So you should take appropriate precaution while handling with the STS powder. Now put the powder in a beaker. And we are going to add some distilled water in it. We need 100 ml volume, but initially we are going approximately 70 ml of distilled water. This STS has surf like properties, so try not to shake it, otherwise, foam will appear. We are going to add magnet in it. and turn on the stirring of the hot plate as well as we need some heat so that STS can dissolve easily. You will see the certain form is appearing and initially the color of this mixture is turbid, but as it dissolves, it will appear slightly transparent. As you can see, this 10% STS powder has been dissolved. As you can see, the appearance of the solution is transparent. Now we will switch off the stirrer as well as heat and make the final volume 100 ml. We will add the dissolved solution in a measuring cylinder. And make the final volume up to 100 ml. Now this 100 ml STS solution has been prepared and we need to store this in a clean reagent bottle. Now this 10% STS solution has been prepared, you can use it whenever you are required. Students, the next practical uh, solution is 10 normal NOH solution. You know NOH is a basic and usually uh, NOH is found in the form of pellets. So first of all, as you know, we are going to weigh our uh, NOH pellets. We need 40 grams of NOH to make 100 ml of the solution. So, uh, I'm going to tear or zero the weighing paper. When the reading is zero, we are going to add our pellets to make 40 grams of the weight. NMH is highly basic. So you should be careful while handling its pellets. 
and we will be needing uh, distilled water. So I am taking less than 100 ml of distilled water. I am taking about 65 ml of distilled water because when we are going to add the NOH pellets, uh, their weight is going to add up. Take a clean beaker, add distilled water. and add your weight NOH pellets in that beaker. Now you need to turn on the stirrer. It may take a while uh, for the pellets to be dissolved. You will also notice that Heat is produced when these pellets are going to be dissolved. So you don't turn on the heat, just turn on the stirring function of the hot plate. As you can see, whenever you store a reagent, the region bottle should be properly labeled as I mentioned earlier with the name of the solution, uh, date of preparation, its uh, initial of scientists who prepared the solution, lot number and its expiry date. So it's preferred to clean the reagent bottle beforehand and label it properly. Mostly this highly basic uh, solution is used to for pH measurements or to adjust pH of other solutions. After complete resolution of the pellets of NaOH, we are going to turn off the stirrer and put the solution in a volumetric cylinder. and finally make the volume of 100 ml as we have added the NOH pellets for solution of 100 ml. So it's about 70 ml. We need to add some more water, distilled water. Be careful about the measurement. For small volumes, we can also transfer water using the pipette. Now this is 100 ml complete, we are going to add this in a reagent bottle, reagent bottle should be clean and this solution can be stored at room temperature for few months. Now the, the normal annual solution is ready. Students. Now we are going to prepare 10 mg per ml ethylamide solution. Ethylamide basically is a chemical that is used to uh, stain DNA while running in a gel electrophoresis procedure. So for this we need 0.2 gram of ethylamide powder. This powder is carcinogenic uh, because it can bind to DNA. So you have to be very careful while handling this powder. I have already measured 0.2 gram of ethylamide powder and uh, we are going to add this powder in 20 ml of distilled water because this powder is very dangerous so I am not going to Add this solution in a cylinder. We will directly measure 20 ml water and add 0.2 gram of ethylamide. Mix it well. It might take some time for mixing. As you can see, it's slightly orange color. So it gives this DNA orange color while we see uh, the DNA in UV light. After proper mixing, 
The storage condition is very important because we have to store this ethylene bromide in dark. For that, it is recommended to use dark bottle or you can cover this with any sheet that can reflect light. For example, we can use aluminum foil to cover this falcon as light can degrade this chemical. So this is your 10 mg per ml ethylene which is ready. It is recommended to store it at 4 degrees centigrade for further use. Dear students, the next solution preparation is about 50x TAE solution that is used for electrophoresis. For this preparation, we need 24.2 grams of crisp base. So we are going to measure the crisp base powder. Then we will add 5.7 ml of acetic acid and 10 ml of EDTA 0.5 molar solution. So first of all, we are going to put our weighing paper on the balance, tear it, when it becomes zero, we will add crisp base powder equivalent to 24.2 grams. The desired amount of crisp base should be added in a buffer uh, in a beaker and we will add some distilled water in the beaker so that crisp base can be dissolved and as we are going to prepare 100 ml of 50 xta so i am going to add some less amount like around 65 ml of water distilled water in it Turn on the stirring. For crisp base to be dissolved. So we have already prepared 0.5 molar EDTA buffer pH 8. Using a pipette. Carefully take 10 ml of EDTA buffer and add in the tray space. The third ingredient is glacial acetic acid. As the name show, it is acid. So you should be very careful about handling this acid. We need 5.7 ml of uh, this solution. You can take this through a, a glass pipette or you can also measure using a micro pipette. We need 5.7 ml. So I'm going to add five times 1000 microliters that would be equal to 5 ml then I can change the measurement to 700 microliters Finally, adding this amount. Discard the tip of acetic acid carefully. As you can see, the whole ingredients have been dissolved. We will turn off the stirrer. and make the final volume of 100 ml. For that, we will use graduated cylinder. And we need, we need to make the final volume with distilled water up to 100 ml.
After making the final volume, we need to store the 50x buffer in a clean glass reagent bottle. So our 100ml 50x TA buffer has been prepared. You can store it at appropriate conditions and use it for few months. Dear students, now we are going to prepare 2x gel loading dye. This dye is used for agarose gel electrophoresis for separation of different size of DNA molecules. To prepare gel loading dye, we need three ingredients. First of all, 2% bromophenol blue, 2% xylene cyanol, and glycerol. Xylene cyanol, cyanol and bromophenol blue are basically dyes that give colors to the sample. I'm going to prepare in a falcon. So, I'm going to add bromophenol blue which is 2% already prepared solution to 50 microliter so on the pipette I have already said 250 microliter you should be careful about uh, while using the dyes because it can stain your garments now the same amount about 250 microliters of xylene cyanol which is 2% while running on the gel you will see blue color of this dye under the influence of electricity running through the gel. And last ingredient is 7 ml of glycerol. Glycerol serves two purpose while used in the gel loading dye. Glycerol gives density to the sample so that it, the DNA sample will go straight into the well. Mix it by inverting several times. And your 2x gel loading dye for agro gel forces is ready. This will be mixed in your DNA sample while you are going to run the gel. Students, uh, the next spectacle is about preparation of 1x TA buffer. Basically, 1x TA buffer is a working solution that we are going to prepare from 50x TA buffer. The calculation that how much amount of this 50x TA buffer will be added for to prepare 1x TA buffer can be obtained from simple C1V1 is equal to C2V2 formula that has been explained earlier. So, according to the formula, we need 10 ml of 50x to make final volume of 500 ml. We are going to measure 10 ml using pipette. You can also use small cylinder 
graduate is slender to my ear tan enamel volume. Carefully transfer tan enamel of 50x TA buffer in a reagent bottle. Now we need to make the final volume up to 500 ml. As we have added 10 ml, so I am going to add 40 ml distilled water. plus 450 ml of distilled water that will give us a final volume of 500 we'll close it mix it and 1x TA buffer is ready to be used in a gel apparatus. You can store it at appropriate conditions. Dear students, TE buffer is our next solution that we are going to prepare. In this solution, T stands for Tricial buffer and E stands for EDT buffer. So we have to mix these two buffers in a certain quantity. We have already prepared 0.5 molar EDT buffer and 1 molar test solution buffer. For preparation of 100 ml of PE buffer, uh, we need 400 ml volume of EDTA. So we are going to measure this with the help of a micropipette. This micropipette can uh, measure up to 1000 microliter, but we are going to use 400 of it. So, 400 microliter of 0.5 molar pH 8 PDTA. And 1 ml of 1 molar Tris buffer. But before taking the test buffer, we need to adjust the pipette up to 1000 microliter. This 3E buffer is often used for washing of cells and it's also used for storage of biomolecules like proteins and nucleic acid. Now we have to make the final volume up to 100 ml. This TE buffer is ready and we need to store it in a clean container appropriately labeled. So this is Tris EDTA buffer ready to be used. Students, the next practical of preparation of solution is about TE and buffer. TE and buffer is often used for extraction DNA extraction practical in which T stands for TRIS, E stands for EDTA and N stands for NACL. So these are three basic ingredients. We have already prepared the stock of 0.5 molar EDTA, stock of 1 molar TRIS solution and 5 molar sodium chloride solution. Let's do the preparation. I'm going to mix all the ingredients in a graduated cylinder. First of all, we need to add 1 ml of 1 molar press buffer. To measure this, I'm going to use a micropipette which is already adjusted at 1000 microliter equivalent to 1 ml. Carefully measure 1 ml press solution. 
we need to add 0.5 molar EDTA buffer equivalent to 0.4 ml. Next, our third ingredient is 5 molar sodium chloride solution and we need to take it 8 ml. For measuring this, I am going to use pipette. So 8 ml of sodium chloride solution should be dispensed into the container. After adding our 3 ingredients, 1 molar tris base, 0.5 molar EDTA and 5 molar sodium chloride solution, we need to make the final volume up to 100 ml. And now this solution is ready. Store this solution in a clean labeled reagent bottle. And this TEN buffer is ready to be used.